One of the most exciting moments for me in my life as a writer has been when I went to stay with Coco Chanel's great niece. So this was Chanel's nephew's daughter in the course of researching my book about Coco Chanel. And I went to see her, she's called Gabrielle after her aunt, and she was born in the late 20s and she's still alive and a really wonderful woman, an amazing guide to the real Coco Chanel, or rather Gabrielle Chanel, which was her christened name. And after we talked and done the interview and, you know, the official sort of interview, as it were, was over, uh, Gabrielle said to me, I want to show you something. Nothing has ever prepared me for what I saw when I opened the wardrobe. For there were rows and rows of beautiful Chanel couture pieces. And Gabrielle, Madame Le Bruni, her name is, said to me, these were Auntie Coco's own clothes. And then Gabrielle said to me, try them on. And I, I could barely speak at this point. I said, are you sure? And she said, yes, try them on. So I tried on a coat. It was just the most beautiful coat. It was the color of autumn leaves, rich tweed. But what was extraordinary about it was it was so soft. You know how sometimes tweed can be a bit scratchy. This was as soft as feathers. And when you put it on, it kind of swung around me. And I have to say, I have never felt as elegant as in this coat. And the, there's something incredible about the sleeves. Um, Chanel spent years, decades, learning how to make the perfect sleeve. And she was terribly particular about sleeves. So she would fit and refit sleeves and armholes. And there's something incredibly lengthening about these sleeves. So you slip it on, it makes your arms look very long and elegant and beautifully lined in silk. And then I tried on a jacket, a cream Chanel jacket. Um, this is a, a Chanel jacket um, and it has the chain that was always sewn and still is sewn into a Chanel jacket to make it hang properly. Anyway, so I tried this cream jacket on again. It hung beautifully. Um, it moved just as I moved. It made me look like I had a miraculously good figure, which I don't actually have in reality, but it cuts, it just cuts so well. It gives you a waist and, you know, enhances everything in the right place. And then I put my hands in the pocket because the thing about a Chanel jacket um, is that she always believed that there should be a pocket, not just a pretend pocket, and every buttonhole, there should be a proper hole and a proper button so you can do things up. So I slipped my hand in the pocket and there inside um, was a handkerchief and I pulled it out and, it's, and I smelt it and there was still a scent on it, a very faint scent, but nevertheless, the scent of Chanel number no. five. And I said to Gabrielle, am I imagining this? I know I am now officially the most obsessed person ever about Coco Chanel, but it, it smells, I can smell the scent. And she said, well, yes, because my aunt, she calls her Auntie Coco, wore Chanel number no. five every day. She sprayed it around her, she sprayed it on her handkerchiefs, on her gloves. She, there was an, another jacket I tried on in the wardrobe that had gloves in it that smelt of number no. five. Uh, she would burn it in her fireplace. She wafted in a world of Chanel number no. five and the scent still lingers. And that seemed such a living embodiment of Coco Chanel, it was as if her spirit was still there, the, the spirit of the woman in the essence of the, the scent. And I, I don't think anything quite as amazing has ever happened to me as a writer, and I just felt incredibly lucky and incredibly privileged to try on the clothes of Mademoiselle Chanel.